So I'm Calla Winchell um, from Midwestern Marx, and this is um, Socialism on Your Ballot, a show where we interview socialists and communists running for office around the United States. Um, today we have Stephen Estrada. Um, he's running for uh, city council for Long Be in Long Beach in Southern California. Um, and yeah, welcome, Stephen. Uh, we're so glad to have you on the, the first episode of this, um, this show. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm just a huge fan of, um, uh, of your outlet and all the work that you're doing. It's so vital uh, for the movement. So yeah, huge honor for me. Thank oh, you. We are honored as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I guess the first question is to just um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, okay. How did you find your way to being a communist? Um, and I'm also sort of curious about if there were specific thinkers or activists that were influential on you. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, my name is Steven Estrada. Um, I'm, I just turned 30, so I'm no longer in my 20s. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, um, I do a lot of organizing down here in Long Beach. Uh, I, uh, or, I organize obviously with the Communist Party USA. We built a club uh, within the last two years. It's been growing pretty well. Um, I'm also an organizer with the Long Beach Tennis Union, and I'm involved with the uh, Veterans uh, for Peace as well, um, because I am a U.S. Army veteran. Um, and I think my political development, like a lot of people in the U.S., has come really stem from from life experiences to begin with. Um, you know, I grew up in Southern California, and um, you know, as a as a kid, I experienced a lot of poverty. Um, you know, jumping from housing instability to, um, you know, food insecurity. And, um, you know, both of my parents were actually uh, served bouts in federal prison. So, you know, I, I, I'm familiar with this country's uh, mass incarceration system that we have. And, you know, that, that kind of set for me, um, ideologically, I, I kind of really understood the value of social programs. You know, the, the things like food stamps, housing assistance, WIC, um, I really saw them, the, the value and just how much we rely, communities and neighborhoods rely on those programs and what government can do if we give them the resources. Um, but it really wasn't until after I left the army in particular, um, I was a sergeant in fifth group special forces. Um, I was deployed um, to the Middle East in various locations um, with the crisis uh, response team. Uh, and I was there when the Syrian civil war broke out. And, you know, part of my job was learning about what exactly were the social mechanisms, what was the process uh, for that civil war. And as I dug deeper into it, um, I, I remember, you know, still being in the army, just having a lot of questions and just confused and, you know, I, I didn't understand it. And, and when I left, you know, I, I took classes um, here at Long Beach State. And I, that's where I first started to encounter thinkers like uh, Galeano in particular um, and uh, his work on imperialism. That's really a, a fundamental text for me. And from there, you know, I, I just, uh, I, I learned about Lenin, you know, cause I was really interested in imperialism. I, I heard him um, and, and his ideas on, on anti-imperialism. And from there, it was just a snowball. I just wanted to consume Marxist theory and I, and I just, fell in love with that, the logic and the, the science of it all. Great, yeah. Um, I think I read on your website that you may have even enlisted in the military to pay for your education, is that right? Yeah, I did. Um, I, was a, I was a kid, I was at 19, I believe when I joined. Yeah. Um, I had uh, initially was going to San Diego State and uh, I lasted one semester. I, I couldn't afford uh, living in the dorms. You know, there were, there were days where I, or weeks, I guess, where I couldn't, I didn't have any money to wash my clothes, for instance. It was just a really bad experience. And it's funny, you know, I, um, the day I left is actually, you know, I was packing all my stuff for my dorm um, and they had a little army recruitment table and that's where they got me, like right as I was, it's, it's so ironic, I guess. Um, and I think exemplary of the, the kind of system that preys on on people who are, don't have the means to, to um, to, to attain an education. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just, I, I thought that was interesting because you've really, you've lived those um, systemic mm -hmm. problems. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, personally, my journey to the left or what sparked my um, interest in the left 
um, you know, I, I understood um, basic sort of socialist principles when I was much younger, but it was finding out about the mil uh, prison industrial complex mm -hmm. um, that really sparked my interest in the left um, and specifically private prisons. Um, and that's sort of what snowballed for me. So I, I really yeah. related to your um, uh, experience with your parents because I just, mm -hmm. it's so emblematic of the state of late capital that we live in. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I found that really interesting. And um, I think that certainly informed your perspective in interesting ways. Um, yeah. So moving then to your community, right? Because that mm -hmm. sort of always the orientation of the Marxist, right? Yeah. Um, what are some main challenges that your specific community in Long Beach is facing? Um, and, you know, how does your campaign want to address those issues? Yeah, I, I mean, I think Long Beach is very uh, emblematic of, of, of what the issues are in a lot of cities here in Southern California. Sure. Um, you know, we're very socially progressive. I think we have, um, you know, we're open culturally. Uh, it, we have a big, um, really, really proud LGBTQ community um, that, that's really found its home here in Long Beach. Um, it's wonderfully diverse. There's Cambodian communities. There's a strong Latino community. Um, but the issues I think here are, are namely, um, you can kind of boil it down to the failures of, of, of liberalism in particular, right? Um, yeah. Housing issues, uh, rent skyrocketing, uh, the, the lack of uh, public transportation, um, economic inequality. And, and really when we boil down to what the root of the issues are, it's, it's poverty here in my district. Uh, we are on the West side and there is a history of racial and economic segregation that's kind of led to what the, you know, the demographics are, to um, you know, the, just the, the geography of poverty here. Every, all the poverty is located on the west uh, in, the, south, in the, the north side of Long Beach. And that's where my district is, I'm in the west. Um, and we have communities and neighborhoods that have upwards of 85% uh, in, in relative poverty, right? Um, and that's a huge issue. Uh, that leads to all different kinds of, uh, uh, all kinds of things like uh, environmental pollution, uh, lack of uh, political engagement. Uh, and, and that's really what we want to tackle. Primarily, how do we distribute resources in a way that's equitable and that's reflective of the communities that, that really make our city run? So that's, that's, that's really what, what our, um, our campaign is focused on, tackling poverty, uh, setting up government, uh, local city government programs that can, uh, that can can tackle those issues and, and eliminate it. So, you know, one thing that we've really uh, taken inspiration from uh, Latin American socialists in particular, uh, Pedro Castillo's uh, slogan of no, no poor people in a rich city, uh, I think just translates wonderfully here. Uh, and and that's, that's really what our focus is. Uh, and and that's, that you can see that, uh, I think, manifested in numerous policy positions that we have. It, it's really about tackling poverty, ending poverty here in our city. I like that phrase. I think you used, you said the geography of your district. And, mm -hmm. um, my experience, I lived in Southern California for um, two or three years um, when I was, I guess it was almost nine or 10 years ago. But one of the things I really noticed and that the city taught me um, was the way that the built world um, in California specifically perpetuates poverty and systemic issues. Um, I just remember being really struck by sort of the ways that highways would cut neighborhoods off from each other and the purposeful way that especially public transportation is um, purposely underserving communities. Um, those were lessons that I, I learned in Southern California um, as a young person and it really opened my eyes to it. I know, um, I think uh, public transportation is one of your sort of key issues that I noticed um, in my research on you. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, I, I wondered if you could talk a little bit more about that. I, it's a personal interest of mine, but I think it's something yeah. that um, people don't often consider, but that have huge repercussions for um, how the working class live. Absolutely. I mean, I think it, it, the interesting part about this city, um, or this run for our city council is, you know, 
getting at what do voters expect from their local city council members, you know? Sure. Um, and a lot of it is just very simple things like parking, right? I mean, one of the huge complaints that we've gotten um, you know, in our door knocking events or just talking to some people here in the city is, I can't find anywhere to park, right? Sure. And um, as Marxists, it's our responsibility to take those complaints, right? And then get at what, the, what is the root of that issue? And, and like you said, the root of the issue is that we have a, a, a fundamental lack of public transportation, right? People are having to rely on vehicles to get to work, to, to run errands, to get to school. And, and it's designed that way, right? Southern California is designed to facilitate uh, vehicle production, right? It's, it's, it's capitalism at its core. And what we want to, um, how we want to solve that is by, as you said, uh, creating a robust and, and fast and safe tra public transportation program uh, for everybody here that is free. Um, I, I, we do not believe that you should have to pay to take a bus to go to work. Uh, that, that we, we find that it's, that, that it's uh, the city and the local government's responsibility to ensure um, that we are able to provide that for people. And, and, and that's not just, you know, a, a, it's a class issue, it's, it's a racial issue. You know, one out of every four um, African-American households do not have a, a car here in Long Beach. And that leads to all different kinds of issues uh, uh, in, in terms of equitable economic outcomes. And it, it, it's something that we um, see have, has tremendous spillover benefits in terms of uh, reducing housing costs, in terms of uh, just uh, being able to create more open green space community centers for, for, for our communities and our neighborhoods. Uh, and, and it's just, like you said, it's just so many huge, huge, huge benefits that, that people will see direct uh, and almost immediate uh, benefits from. So it's, it's a huge issue and, and we're really excited about it. Yeah, I think that's a really key thing we need to distinguish ourselves as um, communists, that much of politics, as people think of it now, is about mm -hmm. posturing and culture war and things like that, which um, give an emotional high, but do not really address actual life, right? Yeah. And I think it's important for us to be able to deliver really material, no pun intended, material benefits mm -hmm. um, mm. into people's lives, because I think right now it's, you know, politics is abstract um, on both sides um, mm. in really sort of ineffective ways. Um, so I think that's key. I think that's really important. Um, great. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to be good and follow questions, but then I also get <laughs> curious and, you know, want to go different places. Yeah, that's okay. Um, that's good. Actually, no, your, your answer is great. You made it easy on me. Um, my mm. next question is more about how your specific issues, um, that your community faces, um, are linked to, um, issues that the working class faces. In general, in America, do you see um, sort of similarities between uh, those two groups? Yeah, so you're saying uh, issues that uh, Long Beach community has in yeah. relation to the- I think I said States. it in a roundabout way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, no, I think, I mean, there's just, there's tons. Uh, and, and like I I, I, kinda, I think I referenced it earlier, um, being a big city, we deal with homelessness with with rent issues primarily and housing is kind of the, the big issue here in Long Beach um, you know I'm, I'm honored to be a part of the Long Beach Tenant Union I get to see um, you know up close and personal how how just uh, I'm just going to say despicable the the, the real estate interests uh, are here in Long Beach uh, and the amount of influence that they have in politics um, so it's kind of like a mi microcosm for national level politics right we see big business and, and big real estate uh, really dictating the way that our city distributes resources, the way that we budget. Um, you know, there's a local publication who recently published an article in which they documented uh, a very prominent real estate uh, company uh, and their contributions to every single city council member's uh, campaigns. And we're ultimately finding that they really they 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 dictate almost every policy. If they don't sign off on it, it's not going to get passed. Um, and I, I think it's 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 very um, it resembles 
what the issue is where you really live in a dictatorship of of the rich and of the powerful um you know here in long beach for instance you can't sign a petition and get you know something in front of your city council members to vote on that's not you can't agendize items um yeah so it, it's something that uh, i think really is uh, a symbol i, I suppose of, of just how politically disenfranchised their communities are um, at the city level. And um, yeah, I, I think it's uh, something that really, that's what our campaign is about. It's about restoring that power and balance and, and putting that, uh, that influence back into our neighborhoods, back into our communities. Yeah, I think that's really interesting that, um, yeah, it is really emblematic of a larger voicelessness. Mm -hmm. right? Hopefully we can start addressing that. Um, Okay, so we talked a little bit about, you know, how the community, your community is similar to the wider um, mm. issues that Americans face. Um, I think the next question um, is a little bit more pointed. It's uh, towards um, socialists who might still believe that aligning with the Democratic Party um, mm. is a feasible option, um, that it may be potentially reformable or I think sometimes the term is harm reduction. Um, I think the goal like, is that you know Bernie or AOC or someone will save us. Um, how does your run with the Communist Party um, challenge this? Um, and how important do you think it is to build a different party versus working with what we have? Uh, I think you know, as, as Marxists, we have to approach it I think with nuance and a, a sophisticated analysis of you know, the, the balance of forces here. Um, ultimately, the, the Democratic Party is a, is, a, is a bourgeois party, right? It's, uh, it doesn't no serve doubt. the interest. It doesn't serve the interests of the working class. Um, you know, but it is the position of the Communist Party USA that there are, there are still forces within the Democratic Party, um, and there's a mass space that we should still appeal to. Um, and we try to uh, convince them of our positions, being able to, uh, you know, get them on our side. And as you said, this run in particular is uh, an opportunity for us to showcase uh, our, our positions, our ideas, our solutions to the problems that people face. And it's about uh, giving us the platform to do it, right? We have uh, interviews like this one. Uh, where we're able to tell people, you know, how we're going to solve your problems, you know, what, how are we thinking, you know, what are our solutions, what are our candidates like, and um, what is our ideology. And so this is really about growing our, um, our, our, our reach and uh, developing just the kind of the institutional knowledge of what it's like to run a campaign. You know, our, our party has a huge and, and just honored tradition and legacy in this country. And you know, unfortunately, a lot of that was was taken away from us due to you know McCarthyism and attacks on the party. And we're we still in the process of relearning right what was lost. And so there's a lot of that knowledge of, of getting comrades engaged in the electoralism, know what it is to actually go out and appeal to people and, and earn their votes and earn their trust. That's what this run is about. Yeah. Um, and and it, doing it professionally, doing it competently. Those are skills that we have to learn and we have to reincorporate into our politics. I think um, a lot of people, especially online, have this idea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> say, yes, I agree. You, you know, I don't say have it, to say I it. already <laughs> agree. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of ideas about revolution um, that are just not in line with reality. Uh, and so we just have to recapture that ability to, to convince people and going out and knocking on doors is just an excellent way to expand those skills. And yeah, it, as you said, it's, um, you know, we're not gonna find liberation and revolution in the Democratic Party. It's just, it's not gonna happen. We have to build our party and this is, this is part of the process. Right, but I think um, they can occasionally be fools, right? I think, um, I, like it's, I think it's Jody Dean, she has this idea of, comradeship um, mm -hmm. that I think is really useful right now um, as leftists because I think it's about recognizing a shared vision of the world and I do think that someone like Bernie in a wide sense has a shared uh, outlook of the world that that I share and that um, 
you know, I think other leftists share. And I think in that sense, it, it makes sense to work with them. But I, I do think that um, you have to go in with open eyes, that they will disappoint you every time. Um, and that is their nature. So yeah, I, I think that's interesting. I, I like your more nuanced take because I do think that it's really fun and easy to be revolutionary and hardline um, mm -hmm. on the internet. Um, but it's a lot harder to just actually talk to people and get them on your side. And um, I think we need to be emphasizing more of that and less of just the ideological purity and the winning. Um, yeah, I think that's a great, yeah, that, I think your point on ideological purity, um, you know, for me personally as a candidate, you know, if you don't believe in socialism, but be, you agree with nine out of 10 of my policy, that's a win, you know, we, we got you on our side and you are, you know, the, these people, whether they know it or not, um, are contributing towards class struggle, right? Yeah. And, you know, the ideology aspect is kind of like that last step. Um, and, but it's not always necessary in terms of engaging people and, and through engaging is, is how you actually you actually take real steps towards political development. I think that's a really important aspect of all this. Yeah, you don't need to be wearing a Che Guevara shirt. If you agree yeah. with all of our policy <laughs> proposals, you don't have to call yourself a communist, but exactly. you're our comrade. Um, okay, I, I like that a lot. I like that vision of um, politics. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think this transitions, you sort of already brought this up, um, a criticism I often hear on the left is about electoralism. Um, I think oftentimes it's joking. I got sent a number of memes about people breaking up with electoralism after 2020 or whatever. Um, yeah. But what would you do to address those kinds of criticisms um, that, you know, electoralism is completely useless or you know, I think on the more moderate side that there's an overemphasis on voting as opposed to other forms of activism. Um, how would you address someone that uh, thought that? Those points. Yeah, I, I think, well, certainly um, there are, I think the Democratic Party is an excellent example in which basically all they do is engage in electoralism. There's no mass organization um, taking place. There's no mobilization uh, with it, you know, uh, Okay, they, they to, text people and remind them to vote. It's exactly it's, it's just baby. <laughs> it's just an endless, you know, electoral cycle for them. You know, that that's that's the limit. And that, that there's a real critique to be made there. Um, but again, I, I think as Marxists, we have to study the history of successful revolutionary movements. And mm -hmm. you know, going back to Lenin, um, you know, uh, he he writes about this, about uh, electoralism being one tool, right? That's within your toolbox. Um, and we, we need all the tools we, we can get. Um, it's electoralism is not the only thing, but it is something that can contribute towards, towards winning, towards building. And, um, and, and I, yeah, as I, said, I stated earlier, it's an opportunity for you to showcase your ideas, to put your candidates forward and say, this is what we believe in. Do you want to join us? Right. And, there's value in that. There's immense value in mobilizing people, right? It, it, I, I can, uh, and I have, we have been organizing with the Long Beach Communist Party USA, but when we have a candidate put forth, all of a sudden people are a little bit more energized, right? They see me running and maybe they didn't, they weren't interested in the Communist Party before, but now that they see we're running candidates and now, you know, they're a little bit more interested. They're looking at, you know, there are proposals, they're learning about what it is that I believe in. And, and I, I'm sure I've convinced some people so I think there's, there's immense value in being able to do it. It's just about um, doing it the right way and ensuring that it's not the only thing that you're doing. Yeah, I think that um, there's a misconception of, of Marxism that it's inherently dogmatic and sort of one size fits all. Mm -hmm. And I think as we've seen, especially in the sort of history of socialist movements of the last hundred years, that's not the case, right? That there's many tools in the toolbox of Marxism and that specific social and economic uh, contexts demand different ones be used. Yep. Um, and so I, I think in that sense, as long as it's understood to be one among many tools, um, which I think I would be much more concerned about um, a Democrat forgetting that than uh, a leftist candidate. Mm. Um, 
I, I think it, it works. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's a good response to to it. I mean, anytime you can go back to Lenin and quote it. <laughs> yeah, Lenin is just, I don't know, he's like the North Star, right? You know, in our, in our movement. Foundational. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think even maybe more than Marx, which I shouldn't say, because Marx is, is <laughs> yeah, he put it into practice. Yeah, Lenin is just, you know, you put it into practice and yeah. um, there's just real value in, in, in um, actually doing it, you know, for the, and having success. And I think, you know, his, his lessons have just been timeless. Um, and, and, you know, I, I know he, the anniversary of his death recently happened, I believe it was yesterday. And, you know, we still, see, we still see his enormous contributions to the history of the world. And it just never, it never um, ceases to amaze me. Um, so, yeah. Huge well, just, it remains so applicable. And so does Marx, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the identification of imperialism as one of sort of the characteristics of um, the stage of capital that we're in, just it reinforces itself again and again how true it is and so I think that's yeah it, it almost feels prophetic and you know I'm not a uh, someone who believes in the great man theory of history or anything like that but um you know there's a there's a certain power to his words because they just they feel applicable um you know even now so yeah absolutely always go back to London but <laughs> Um, okay, sort of related to this question, I think you kind of answered it, but would you have specific recommendations for people whose only engagement in politics right now is electoralism? Um, what would you recommend uh, as far as how do people get um, involved in more activism? Um, how do we create those links between people who are maybe kind of engaged in political discussion? How do we get those people to then um, start using the other tools in the toolbox? Uh, as we yeah. mentioned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, I'm a member of the Communist Party USA, so I would say, you know, join, join the Communist Party USA. <laughs> um, that's the easiest uh, way to get involved is to get involved with an organization that's similar. Uh, I guess the an ideology is similar in terms of their world outlook and, you know, start to literally organize together in group settings and figure out what are the problems in my community? What are the steps that we can realistically take to begin solving them um that's 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 really the first step is organizing getting together and and then mobilize and, and develop plans of action um for change so you know i, I think you know I, i'm biased but uh you know there are many orgs in usually in, in communities that you can get involved with um and i don't even think they necessarily need to be um uh, i guess explicitly socialist there for instance we have um, neighborhood associations here in Long Beach that do wonderful work, and it's usually, um, as I stated earlier, it's 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 they're engaging in class struggle whether they know it or not. Um, you know, they're 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 against uh, corruption at, at the um, at the city level. They're they're often out on the front lines fighting against police injustice, which is a huge issue here in, in Long Beach as well. Um, you know, we have the worst uh, Long Beach. I think it was rated uh, in terms of uh, the violence and and um, Incident reports one of the worst in the state, um, but that's just the. <laughs> California is yeah. pretty fucking rough. <laughs> it's rough. It's rough out here. I know. Like, I think LBPD took it from LAPD in terms of just the worst in the state. Yeah, um, it's but, hard to hard to talk. Yeah, um, but yeah, that you know that that's that's uh, that's really an important step uh, at the very root at the the local grassroots level, getting involved and putting your ideas into practice. That's that's just a huge. That's a huge step, and um, yeah, it can be scary. I think it's nerve-wracking to be able to um, go to strangers and try to convince them of something, yeah. you know. Uh, and you know, it, 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 but it's a necessary step. And I yeah. think um, people are, are are realizing that more and more every day. Yeah, I I've never been, I don't think, successful converting someone to leftist politics on the internet. I, that's why I don't do it at all anymore because it's just never worked. But mm -hmm. I've been tremendously successful face-to-face, person-to-person talking. Absolutely. You know, and yeah. I just think that we need to take that step. Um, at, because the, yeah, you, you can't replace that, um, 
that individual sort of unmediated experience, I think. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, we just got to get people from just sending in ballots, which is great, um, <laughs> into uh, hopefully something a little bit more um, in touch with community, actual community, right? Which we have such yeah. a problem with in the US. We just, I don't think there's a lot of um, encouragement to think in a community oriented manner. And so it's hard to get people to do it. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, you know, that's, that's another issue we have here in Long Beach is just the lack of community space, especially on our side, on the West side, yeah. right? Um, yeah. There's just not, there's not a lot of opportunities to just get in collective spaces and hash out, you know, what are our issues um, right. and, and figure things out. So, you know, and, and it's, and a lot of that's by design, um, absolutely. you know, yeah. and public transportation, I think is, a, is another step that we can take, you know, getting on the bus and talking to each other and, you know, I think that's that's huge. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think there's so much scholarship about successful revolutions and the the necessity of literal spaces to congregate and exchange mm -hmm. ideas and that sort of thing. And that that does go back to our previous conversation about how the way that we build our world um, yeah. shapes or can suppress, you know, political activity. And so mm -hmm. I think focusing on those sort of more literal things like we need community spaces, uh, public transit um, can have uh, an effect on sort of the more abstract um, ways that people think as well. So I, I think that's yeah. really great. Um, and then this is the sort of final um, question and that's, it's more practical. This transition's great um, from what we were talking about what you can do. Um, how can people volunteer or donate um, and find out more about your campaign? Um, and where can they find you on social media? Yeah, yeah. So I think the easiest way uh, to, to reaching out to our campaign is to go to our website, stevenestrada.org. Uh, there you can get access to our, our platform, our policy positions, you can, um, a little bio about me. You want to learn a little bit about my background. Um, you, you have a... Um, uh, forms that you can you can uh, enter and sign up to volunteer if you're in the local area you can sign up to, uh, to donate as well we can always take donations um and uh social media i'm i'm active on twitter at steven estrada d1 is my handle and i believe that's my, my handle for my instagram as well um and yeah you send me a dm follow us share our posts get the word out uh because it's really important this run um you know is the first in a while in terms of being an open open communist attached to a communist organization uh, with the history that we have. And, you know, we're just beginning. We're going to uh, continue to, um, sorry, my, my camera went out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna continue to put out candidates. We're gonna continue to put our ideas out and, um, you know, win over the people. That's that's the plan and, and we're gonna do it. Well, I hope you're successful. We need exactly more people like that um thank you so much for joining us this has been really interesting um and best of luck with you um with your activism and your electoralism <laughs> thank you very much i appreciate the opportunity it was wonderful talking to you um yeah and good luck thank you great